everybody. It's Uber Lady Charlotte. Oh Lord, he all across the grass. I'm sorry. I'm following one of the buses out away from the bus rodeo. Bus rodeo is Sunday in uh, Concord, North Carolina, slash Charlotte by Concord Mills. So you guys can come out if you want. The bus rodeo starts at eight o'clock, and there's also a um, paratransit van and LTV competition. That's where the best bus drivers get out here and try to navigate their way around around this obstacle course. Um, there was something I wanted to talk to you guys about, talking about driving and stuff. Um, I had a subscriber slash friend contact me by email and they wanted to tell me their story of something that just recently happened to them and that really, 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 really upset them. And when I read it, it upset me too. Um, it's one of those things, I don't think we've ever thought about it. You know, it's something you wouldn't think about it and, and until it happens to you. So I'm just heard him get to it. An Uber driver picked up somebody and the young lady left her purse inside the Uber driver's car. Her purse, her iPhone, and, and things. So the Uber driver did what they were supposed to do and they contacted Uber. Let them know, hey, I, I got this purse and, um, you know, I need you to contact the owner to let them know that I have it. All right, but the Uber driver also, they asked the Uber driver, would you like, would you like us to give them your phone number? And of course the Uber driver said no, because you have an option. And the Uber driver said no, don't give them my number. And I'm gonna tell you this, there are other ways for those customers to get in contact with you about a lost item. They don't have to, you don't have to exchange numbers um, to do that. So, you can just tell Uber, hey, da da da, to meet them, blah blah blah. All right, so she said no. I mean, the, the Uber driver said no. Don't give them my number. Well, what do you know? The Uber driver gets a phone call from someone saying, hey, I left my purse in your car. She asked them, how did you get my number? And they told them, Uber gave me your number. But she distinctly said no do not give them my number I don't want any passengers to have my number not only that another uber passenger called them and also said hey I left my purse in your vehicle however this per this person was in a different city this person was in uh, just a whole different town you know so it sounds like uber kind of messed up on that end too as far as giving out the phone number and having two people two different people call for the for a purse a lost purse all right it goes even further next morning this uber driver gets a knock on the door and it's the uber passenger and her boyfriend i know right the uber passenger and her boyfriend are knocking on this person's door asking where's their purse i left my purse and my iphone in your car and i want it of course this the um, Uber driver is very upset because now you got a passenger that knows exactly where you live but you don't know nothing about them but they know where you live and I'm gonna tell you some of our Uber passengers you guys know this some of our Uber Uber passengers aren't all together there some of them are really strange like I know some Uber and Lyft drivers are really strange let's be honest but um so these people show up at her house well I'm sorry at the Uber driver's house unannounced all right, now, so the Uber driver asked the lady, how did you get my address and what are you doing at my house? She says, I used Find My iPhone and it told me where my phone was. And so I came to get my purse and my iPhone. I, I understand this lady really wanted her purse and her phone. I get that. You should have been more careful, but I get that. But I, I want to look at it from two different ways. One now the uber driver is clearly upset i would be upset i got people knocking on my door now what would it have been i mean it would have been even worse if these people knock on the door and you say i don't have your your phone in your purse because we tend to pick up people right after them you know after you drop somebody else you go and pick somebody else up they may have taken the phone or the purse all right so, if they had taken the phone or the purse, now with the way things are going with iPhones, they're very expensive, and Walmart has a machine 
that you can go put the iPhone in and um, they'll give they'll spit you out cash. I don't know if y'all knew that, but they got one here in Concord. And it don't give a damn. It don't matter who the phone belongs to because they're going to put it in the machine and the machine going to spit them out cash. All right, now, or what if the other passenger would have, we'll say if there was a passenger after that lady, would have taken her purse and phone, or just her phone for that matter, just her phone, and sold it on the street late on that night. Now, you and your boyfriend going to knock on somebody's door to do what? To demand your phone? That's how you get shot. That's how you get hurt. Going to accuse people of having your stuff, and you don't really have any proof that they got it. Because things change hands, people sell stolen goods all the time. But now this lady, I'm sorry, the Uber passenger, she did everything she was supposed to do. And it sounds like, based on what she's telling me, that Uber flipped on her and gave out her phone number. Not, not, not just one time, but possibly twice. After she said no. Uber writes her back. She sent me the, she sent me the whole conversation, that, the email that she had with Uber. And they were pretty much like, blah, 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 sorry about your luck, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever, work it out. It, they didn't sound very, I don't know, it didn't sound very authentic to me. It didn't sound very apologetic to me. It just sounds like, yeah, sorry, we slipped, but, you know, anyway, work it out with them. So I can see why she was upset. But now, we'll say these people showed up at her house. They see her, her I mean, they see the Uber, the Uber driver's family, because a family member opened the door. So they see the Uber driver's family. They know where they live. They know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I feel like she, they were intruded upon. They were, that was just dead wrong. It was just dead wrong. There was another way for them to get the purse and, you know, and everything. I mean, really, how would you take it if one of, with some of the passengers I have had, I wouldn't want them showing up at my house. There's another way for me to get you your stuff. Now, let me tell you this. Let's take it a step further. We'll say that you got an Uber passenger that's creepy. Because, yes, some of them can be creepy. You got a passenger that's creepy, and they have an iPhone. But they decide they're really into you, or they're curious as to where you live. Now, all they got to do, really, is stick their iPhone in your back pouch or your back seats. I mean, really. Just stick the pouch in the back seat. I mean, you know, the phone in that little pouch in your back of your seat. And then wait until they think you might be home and go through the app, find my iPhone. Now, they're at your house. They know exactly where you live. Um, we'll just say they're not really interested in the phone because you pay your insurance. You can get you another phone. But now they know where you live and next thing you know you robbed. Robbed, raped, a victim of some kind. All because they left their phone in your car on purpose. So like you pissed them off. Y'all had a few words in the car. All you got to do is put their phone in your backseat pouch and wait until they think you're home in the middle of the night and come to your house with Find My iPhone. Um, <clears throat> I mean, those are three different instances, three different things that are, that could have gone wrong. You you know, this late, this late the Uber driver was invaded. Her privacy was invaded by passengers she picked up in the middle of the night, you know, uh, that's wrong. Number two, the customer was wrong for going to the house because you could have wound up in some serious trouble. You might have wound up a victim trying to go and get your phone. Um, and in the third situation, somebody could set you up by dropping the iPhone in your car on purpose and leaving it there so they can come back to your house later or in the middle of the night. It's crazy. It's crazy. And say their phone was stolen. You know? Um, now, what that what what that gonna make me do? I'm gonna tell you what it's gonna make me do. If I find an iPhone in my car, I'm not taking it to my house. Now I'm gonna take your phone to the police department. I'm just gonna take it to the police department. I'm not gonna even tell Uber that. <clears throat> hey, I found a lost item. No, I'm gonna take your lost and found item to the police department. That way you can track your iPhone over there, and good luck with getting it back. Because I'd much rather do that than have strangers or some of the passengers I pick up show up at my house. I've met a lot of nice passengers, but y'all have heard my stories. I've met some creepy, nasty passengers too. So now, if I find an iPhone, you won't have time to let me find my iPhone or find my iPhone. It'll be at the police department because I got to protect me and my family. All right, so you guys tell me what you think.
and uh, please chime in on this because now this, this steps the game up now I didn't even know about the find my iPhone app and just me sitting back thinking on the various ways that you can use it for good or for bad it's blown my mind so um trust and believe iPhone in my car police department go get it all right so you guys hit me up let me know what you think